Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, June 25th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is part three, the final part for today. But you will probably see this video or be able to watch it or view it uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, June 26th, 2012, because, well, I can't upload my videos today. And it's right on time that my internet gets dumped now on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, so I guess. Apparently, that's what what's going on right now with this. So, um, if it continues, I'll try to break my videos up into seven-minute uh, increments. But, uh, you know, that's just going to be a pain. Um, but I'll try doing it. So, okay, I have this interesting article up. Uh, Army looks to strike foes with lightning weapon. And um, I was just talking about this with a friend saying, you know, one of the things, there's like a few things that kind of just like bring um, shivers down my spine, uh, you know, throughout my life when I realized something. And one of them was the ability by these global bastards to be able to direct energy at you coming from satellite transmissions or whatever it is. Uh, from the ground, bounced off to satellites, back down to direct it to a certain location, and actually hit you with lightning. I mean, I kind of realized that about three years ago when I started to really kind of think, I grasped the concept of this weather modification system that they've set up. And it's pretty frightening. It's pretty scary. And it says here, today's military leaders can blind spy satellites or burn enemy's vehicles, but tomorrow's could guide lightning bolts to strike and destroy battlefield targets. A U.S. Army lab is testing how lasers can create an energized plasma channel in the air, an invisible pathway for electricity to follow. The laser-guided lightning weapons could precisely hit targets such as enemy tanks, um, civilians cooking and barbecuing in their backyard or unexploded roadside bombs because such targets represent better uh, conductors for electricity than the ground. Army researchers use an ultra short pulse laser of modest energy that keeps the laser beam focused through its own intensity so the laser's electromagnetic field can harvest electrons from the air molecules to create plasma pathways for electricity to follow. Just to give you an idea, during the duration of the laser pulse, it can be putting out more power than a large city needs, but the pulse only lasts for only two trillionths of a second. So, ah, look at this, our old buddy microwave transmissions, right? Uh, such a laser-induced plasma channel could also direct high-powered microwave pulses as well as electricity, according to 2009 Wired article. Microwave pulses have already become weapons in Air Force missiles used to burn out the electronic systems of air defense systems, military jets, drones, also on civilians, uh, civilian populations for uh, pacifying the public, right? And uh, psychological, psychotronic weapons. But they don't include that because it's all about uh, the war on terror and it's about the troops and, and, and giving them new tools and gadgets. And one last thing I just wanted to say was I, re I just noticed, observed last year, uh, last summer and now this summer, that, uh, that they're actually experimenting with creating lightning. Uh, I've seen them do the, the whole thing with creating the droughts, creating the rain, creating the snow, creating the hurricanes, the tornadoes. Um, but there was two things that I noticed that were new recently besides the hail and that, which was what? Which was, one was the lightning, because you could just tell. It's just really weird, weird lightning. Um, and you could tell when it happens because there's just, oh, I, I don't even know how to explain it, really. I've seen lightning most of my life. I'm 31 years old. But the lightning that I saw last year and I'm starting to see this year seems to be more of a weather modification operation where they're actually testing it. Because you can't actually see where the lightning comes. It's like this weird mist or haze that kind of just comes up, mostly chemicals being pulsed with energy. And then you just see this lightning that is mostly horizontal. It hardly ever really strikes straight down, like real thick bolts. It's real thin and wiry and spidery. Um, the other thing, of course, is what? To actually create cold. I don't know what the hell they were doing. This is only one time that I've, that I've seen this, and this was this year um, in the spring, where, where it actually smelled like radiator fluid in the air. And you can see your breath, but it was not that cold. I mean, you could wear a T-shirt, and it didn't seem that cold, but it had like these... It just gave the, the perception or the appearance that it was colder, and you could see your breath. 
So really just some wicked stuff here. It says here, U.S. government gives U.N. classified Tesla technology to assist sustainable development scheme. It says here, wireless energy transfer, WET, i.e. wireless energy transmission is a transference of electromagnetic energy transmitted from a central power source without the use of connecting wires. It says Tesla's coil experiments proving the feasibility of it. Um, during experiments in Colorado in the early 1900s were the precursor to the inventions. After he died, the U.S. government confiscated all documents pertaining to his experiments and classified them. Since the 50s, the U.S. government has held this technology in secret. In conjunction with the 2009 National Defense Authorization Act, God, there's just everything written in that, isn't there? <laughs> Directed the appointment of a director of operational energy plans and programs in the DOD according uh, coordinating and overseeing programs, activities relating to the implementing of the operational energy strategies, research, development, investments, blah, 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 the use of the U.S. government. It says here, Dr. Heinz Schandl, whatever, lead research, is a lead researcher at the Social Systems Institute and Governance in the Social and Economic Science Program. Wow, sustainable ecosystem. So, but he says here, he's working with governments and local communities in Australia and the Asia Pacific region. He's also working with the United Nations Environmental Program, or UNEP. On sustainable ecosystem corporation coercing and pressuring nations worldwide through eco-terrorism to alter their lifestyle and consumption to reflect UNEP's international regulations and just remember in Australia they just had a carbon tax I believe it just went into effect under the Millennium Project of the American Council for the United Nations University is turning towards wireless energy transfer to answer global energy needs and then finishing up here, it says funding for the UN's new control endeavors coming from the National Science Foundation in collaboration with NASA and the Electric Power Research Institute. So uh, finishing up, essentially the U.S. government is working with the UN to develop wireless energy transmissions technology for the express use of UN. So, uh, you know, I've discussed this with some, you know, some other people that, and, you know, Tesla may have had some good things. But, you know, you got to remember, it's like he wasn't just used. He probably knew what he was doing. And he helped create, what, like death rays and um, all sorts of stuff that are being used against us. You know, earthquake weapons and that. So I don't know if he was a great, wonderful um, uh, humanitarian or not. But uh, we're told that he is. Maybe we're told that by the same people that he worked for. I mean, just think about it. It's bad enough with all the wireless transmissions that are going through the air right now, right? Wreaking havoc on our bodies. Uh, uh, what if we did actually have that type of technology? We know that. I mean, you and I both know that it's not going to be um, safe. It's not going to be safe. They just unleash on public and, and they experiment on us. Drills of the dead. Again, more zombies. Uh, Maine prepares for zombie attack. It says here, emergency officials in Maine have taken part in a training exercise in preparation for a zombie apocalypse. This comes just weeks after the federal government publicly denied the existence of zombies. Okay. It says here, around 100 emergency responders from eight different counties participated in the event on the quiet city of Bangor. It says here, the premise, an unknown virus originating from Jamaica has reached, the, reached Maine, turning the infected into zombies. It says, once infected, the virus quickly spreads to the brain and turns the host into a full-fledged zombie who is the only thing on its mind, biting other people. So the officials are armed with two would-be vaccines, one to prevent the infection from reaching the brain and one to bring the zombies back to life. It says here, we have identified in several states, particularly Texas, New York, Illinois, outbreaks of these civil disturbances uh, in biting. I think the big one was Florida. They're not including that, says one official. And in conjunction uh, with that, there are also widespread power outages. And there's actually a term uh, for something that fits the symptoms of a zombie. I mean, it's a down in, it's based down in Florida. There's a research facility uh, that's going on. They're carrying out research on this disease, and it includes all the, the symptoms that, uh, that that one individual down, down uh, what was it, in Florida where he was a cannibal and biting people uh, they're all the same symptoms so they are aware of this and they're studying it probably studying to see how they can intensify it and make it uh, more zombie like right Antarctic ice shell is not melting at all new field data shows so it says here that um, 22 year old models which have suggested serious ice loss in the eastern Antarctic have been compared with reality for the first time and found to be wrong so much so that it now appears that no ice is being lost at all. So then we move to this headline, uh, Rio plus 20, 
uh, the eugenic summit, the unhappy uh, environmental summit. So it says it was hard to find a happy soul at the end of the Rio 20. All of those poor um, globalists, uh, you know, they're basically they're supporting this new religion, which is environmentalism. That's why they had the whole Jesus lit up green, right? Um, this right here, the new religion and eco faith. So these. There's uh, many people in this uh, movement that have legitimate um, needs, I guess you could say, or calls, which is to, you know, stop pollution and stuff like the BP type stuff, which is pretty legitimate concerns about the environment. Uh, but the ones that will get passed are the radical ones, like the carbon tax in Australia. Uh, you can't flush your toilet, you know, so many times throughout the day, uh, becoming a zero waste city. But that's the irony. It's not about the environment. This religion is not actually about the environment. So that's why these environment, environmentalists came out of the summit unhappy. So do air and sunlight belong to the state? It says here, North China province says yes. It goes on here and it says that natural resources like wind and sunlight are called public goods, meaning that one person can benefit from them, doesn't harm that of another person, so there's no need to compete for ownership over them. But it says here, unfortunately, it hasn't read that news hasn't reached the political authorities in North China. So, but it doesn't really matter because they're spraying globally and they're spraying in our air and they're pulsing us. And so, I mean, you can tell they don't they don't really consider us as far as a public good or anything like that. They just feel as if they own it. So, I don't know if you remember this uh, Green Guru James Lullock when I talked about it last time. I don't think people have noticed that, but it's got all the sort of terms that religions use. He's talking about the green religion is now taking over from the Christian religion. The greens use guilt. You can't win people round by, uh, or you can't win people round by saying they are guilty for putting CO2 in the air. So we know about them highlighting, uh, you know, the Jesus statue overlooking green. It says um, they're signifying a shift to green religion and perhaps even obligations such as recycling, paying carbon taxes, or living with smart meters could be seen as a religious duty of the faithful. Other symbols at Rio this year are the fish constructed from plastic bottles. And this is an interesting little connect connection that they make here. It says that that the fish symbolism is emblematic uh, to the Christian religion. The fish. It says here the Mitri hat of the Dagon priest resembles the open mouth of a fish. Dagon was the fish god of the pagans. It's the same hat worn by the Pope and bishops of Rome. Some would say the New Age green religion we are trying or are being offered is actually an echo of an old one. Another aspect of this green Jesus is the unavoidable association to Osiris, the Egyptian god. It uh, says here that Osiris was widely worshipped as Lord of the Dead until the suppression of the Egyptian religion during the Christian era. And they show the pictures uh, right here. Then we have grass linked to Texas cattle deaths. It says here a mysterious mass death of a herd of cattle has prompted a federal investigation into central Texas. But it says here preliminary test results are blaming the deaths on the grass the cows were eating when they got sick. So it goes on here, it says that they've been using um, the fields for cattle grazing and hay for 15 years and that it should have been perfect. The grass is a hybrid form of Bermuda, Bermuda known as Tifton 85, which has been growing here for 15 years. And it says here, it says here that it revealed that um, it basically started producing cyanide gas, this uh, hybrid grass it started producing cyanide gas poisonous poisoning the cattle it says here baltic sea object emits a mysterious emp shield and this is a video but i'll go down here to just cover the transcript real quick it says their camera stopped working when they approached the object it says why isn't anything working and anything electric out there and satellite phone as well stopped working when we were above the object and when we got 200 meters away and it turned on again we got back over the object it didn't work so that's kind of strange as well could mars have sustained life extensive water in mars interior scientists have found that the amount of water in places of the martian mantle is vastly larger than previously estimated and then moving on to our last article cassini finds tropical lakes on saturn's moon titan it says here scientists have discovered methane lakes in the tropical areas of saturn's moon titan one of the which is about half the size of utah's great salt lake it says here that the long-standing bodies of liquid were detected by NASA's Cassini spacecraft, which has been orbiting Saturn since its arrival uh, in the ring planet in 2004. It was previously believed that such bodies of liquid only existed at the polar regions of Titan. 
All right, folks, so I'm going to try to make a fourth video today, so please join me again. This is GGN on Darko. Thanks.